first of all, Mariam, from what you're doing, how do you see your role in ensuring that we have technology proving to be responsible, not only with our data, but the way in which they grow, the ethics that they have, and the fact that their, gov that their companies reflect the people that they serve? That's a very good question. Um, thanks for having me. I think I want to go back a little bit um, forward. So I, I just take the example of myself. So I've never been to school. I've never had any education myself. I grew from, uh, from Senegal, West Africa, and I came to the UK when I was 19 years old. So I started reading and writing when I was 16 years old. And so we have, so I was statistic in the 1980s. I was part of this big data everybody's talking about, uh, what you hear today from the United Nations, from UNICEF, and from these NGOs talking about girls and, and women growing across the world. And I think now we're in a position where we can change the narrative uh, for women and girls, and especially when it comes to tech and innovation. Uh, and so what I'm trying to do right now is to get one million women and girls quotas by 2030, because as a society, we can't sit down and just uh, forget about the marginalized communities. We can't forget about the girls uh, I, I used to be. And so we travel across the world to uh, teach girls how to code, uh, give them digital literacy, and then they should be part of the conversation uh, right now as we sit here in London. Where are you go how, how can you ensure that you're getting to the right people at the right time? What skills are you equipping them with? Is it because a lot of the people who perhaps are needing to learn to code need the infrastructure in which to do it. How are you making this? A exactly. So what we've done is we've been looking at uh, what is there around the world. And we, we failed women and girls in particular. In, in getting the right skills. So we design our own products, are very simple to use. We partner with government, private sector, investors, and philanthropic foundations to uh, work with them. And really focus on the multi-stakeholder approach. And the other thing we do, we work uh, here in the UK, we work with Prince Andrew, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and we have free platforms that people can use. But I think the point I'm trying to make is that we need to, as we talk about digital literacy and digital uh, getting people around the world to have access, we need to think about marginalized communities. Yeah. Uh, we need to think about girls who are growing up in Senegal, in Uganda, in Tanzania, all around the world uh, who have no access at all. And so as we change the narratives, we need to think about what are the skills they need, because these people will be part of the, the digital conversation tomorrow. We can't sit here 2030, 2030 is 12 years down the line. And so the reason why we want, I want to teach 1 million women and girls coders by 2030, because we're going to sit at the United Nations on September 20th, 2030, where uh, my marginalized girls are sitting in Uganda with no skills. But they will have amazing ideas on sustainable development goals. So how do we get them engaged and, and get them involved in the conversation? And Rosemary was talking about data. I'm very lucky to sit on the Web Foundation uh, as a board member. But one of the things we're pushing is how do you make sure that the world is equal? These girls are, they don't have access to the internet, uh, but the African government have money to actually to invest in this. And so the more conversation we have with the multi-stakeholders, the more we push, so my job is to go and nag quite a lot. <laughs> I go and push quite a lot to get these young girls part of the conversation. And then you think that this is at its root a supply issue. Do you think that the demand will be there to then hire these computer literate, intelligent, and inspiring women in 10 to 20 years. Absolutely, I think what Matt said, we need to think about the UK as well. I live in, a, I'm very lucky to live in the southeast south of England, Guildford, where di women are digitally illiterate in Guildford. And so, you know, and my girls in, in, in Uganda or in Senegal, they, they can quote four languages. So I think when we talk about technology, we can't just talk about technology as UK, uh, you know, is advanced on that. But we, we, Africa, young women are coding right now four languages from Java to Python. And they will be tomorrow the supply Unilever is looking for, or Google is looking for, or Facebook looking for. And so I think we can't just talk about technology as it's just for one set of people, because my girls are doing amazing work globally. But women in Guildford, they're also now learning how to code in local libraries. Yeah. So we need to have the conversation as a global conversation, not just a conversation Africa or India, because we are actually advanced compared to women in Guildford. So Mariam, you're doing the nagging. <laughs> what can we do here? Here we need to engage, uh, I mean, I think open our mind, and I, I talk about empathy, compassion, and kindness quite a lot, and ha not have a bias against uh, young women and growing across the world. We have uh, violence issues that women are facing across the world, including, including Africa, but when it comes to skills, building the next generation of digital leaders, we cannot just forget the marginalized communities. We need to get them involved, because if we forget them, it's gonna be at our peril, because right now they're building from blockchain platforms to AI, we have data scientists in Africa. We have amazing young women growing up across emerging countries. We don't even know about them. Open our eyes, Mariam. You've just done that for Thank us. You. Thank Thanks. you very much, much indeed. Big round of applause, Mariam Jamey. Wonderful work. Thank you.